It's a great day to talk rehab. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio. Today we're going to continue our clinical rounds about the shoulder and we're going to be talking about functional assessment with the shoulder. Now, before we start, a couple of caveats. Number one, if we're looking at the shoulder that doesn't move but is weak and not painful, weak and not painful, always have to think nerve function first. That trumps everything else. We have to make sure those nerves are working properly and that it's not a nerve issue. They govern everything else, so number one. Number two, when we look at the range of motion, the functional assessment that we're gonna talk about today, there are no real standards. There are no real specificity and sensitivity measurements for these tests. So there's a lot of clinical interpretation involved here. We know what the shoulder girdle is supposed to do when we're looking for dyskinesis, which is the wing bone not moving properly as a stabilizer for the shoulder itself. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Know your normals and then you got to put your clinical cap on to figure out how it falls into your diagnostic logarithm. Lastly, the next portion of our clinical rounds is going to be dedicated to orthopedic testing just orthopedic test for the shoulder. But today, let's look at function, all right? Uh, Mike, say hi to everybody. How's it going? All right, so Mike's gonna be our guy. So let's go back to that one thing I mentioned a moment ago. Let's say we wanna check the nerve function of the rotator cuff. Remember the four motions? Or the supraspinatus, right? So that's gonna be abduction, going straight out to the side, resist, hold, right? The other infraspinatus, Terry's minor, turn out. This is mostly infraspinatus at neutral. But lastly, the subscapularis. Remember we talked about that forgotten one? Watch that video on the subscap. Stan, turn your back to everybody, Mike. It's the liftoff sign. Bring your hand behind your back and then lift it straight off. That's great. So when it lifts off, it lifts straight back. A lot of times people do like one of those. That's a weakness in the subscap. So there you go about what do you do with that shoulder that doesn't move, but it's not painful? Make sure all those work great. Do your reflexes, check all your muscle function. Now, let's look about shoulder dyskinesis. We talked about how when you raise the arms out, the wing bones are supposed to stay pretty stable. First 30 degrees of motion and abduction is humeral. Then the scapula kicks in to about 90, and then up to 120, it goes two to one. Yes, we want to look at that. We want to see if your upper traps are staying quiet and if the scapula are moving symmetrically. So how are we going to change that uh, or check that? Mike, you might slip your shirt off for us today. First, it's just going to be some wall slides, okay? So put your arms against the wall, forearms, 90-90. Just like that. Make sure he's got good stable alignment. From this position, we can see if there's any waning of the scapula. That's really what we're looking for with a lot of these tests. We're also going to watch the inferior angle of the scapula and see how it rotates around. So we're watching the inferior angle of the scapula, we're watching the superior angle of the scapula, okay, and the medial scapular border, all right? So just slide up, stay against the wall and slide up. Traps are staying nice and quiet, the scapula retracting symmetrically, and slide down. A lot of these assessments can also become corrective exercise tests as well. All right, great. Now, you're gonna go at 90, like 120 degrees like you're doing a Y, like YMCA, all right? Now, same thing, go straight up at about 130 degrees, go straighten your elbows up, all the way, go to the wall, all right? We're looking for that same motion, great. One more time, go all the way up. Traps are staying quiet. Now, from here, can you do a lift off? Meaning? Just lifting up, that's what we don't want, just the lift off, oh, straight wow. back, and relax. And lift back, lift off. Good, see these stay quiet? What happens, what Mike showed you first is the distortion. People will do that to get them off the wall. That we don't want. It's a dysfunctional motor pattern. You want this to be stable as you lift off. So these guys are staying relaxed and these are doing the job, all right? The other thing we want to do to really load this a little bit more is you can do it out of the uh, figure, um, not figure four position, or like a kneeling position or a quadruped position. So come on over to the table, Mike. Just go on to a quadruped position. You can do it from a push-up for the higher level athlete, but for your regular patient, this works well. 
Just look where the scapulas sit, under load. Now they're under load. Scoot back. You're checking hip hinge, but you're also seeing if the spine stays in neutral and if you're starting to get weakness in here. Not as common as when you come up into loading them. That's where you're going to see it. To load them more, you shift more body weight to one side, shift more body weight to the other side, looking for dyskinesis, the scapula winging, the scapula shifting abnormally. It's got to be stable. The scapula needs to be stable on the rib cage so that the glenohumeral joint functions properly. Actually, one of the current theories with impingement syndromes, it's really not an impingement of the rotator cuff under the coracroacromion process and through here. What a lot of times it is, it's wear and tear and fraying and a low grade irritation or tendinosis of the rotator cuff tendon, which is creating that pain in the front, in the back, on the side, the shoulder, regardless of there it is. So a little something to think about. It may not be getting pinched, it could be slowly getting wear down. If it's slowly getting worn down, it's because of dyskinesis, and that's why this is so important to check. Okay? Stand please. One last one I want to do, Mike, put your back up against the wall. We want to make sure the scapula can move and the shoulder can move independently of the rib cage, right? And independently of the cervical spine. You have to have that. So, heads against the wall, backs against the wall, butts against the wall. Neutral spine. Now just go straight up all the way into flexion. What am I looking for? I'm looking to see if he can maintain that spinal alignment. I'm looking to see if he's accentuating the lumbar lordosis. I'm looking to see if the ribs are flaring. Those are all dysfunctional motor patterns, which tells us that something's not stable in the kinetic chain, that he's got to compensate to get his shoulders to move. Relax. Let's do that one more time. So as he elevates the arms, yeah, you can, you, you know, it, ideally, good question. Are the feet supposed to be against the wall? Ideally, yes. But if you can't get the feet against the wall because in an instability in the lumbar spine, you got a big lumbar curve, maybe, maybe not an instability, just to increase a curve, or an increased thoracic curvature. That's what happens a lot of times. If you got that upper cross rounded shoulders, people can't get against the wall. So what's essential is that the back, head, and butt are against the wall. If you can get your feet against the wall, that would be ideal. If you can't, they can come out a little bit. All right? That's another issue. That's a functional problem down below if you can't get your feet against the wall with everything else is against the wall, all right? Yep. But since we're checking this, butt, back, head against the wall, neutral spine, and now reach up. And again, looking for a nice stability all in through here, all in through here. So, thanks Mike. Mm -hmm. It's been a great day to talk functional assessment of the shoulder. There goes Mike. Crossing in front of me. He does a couple of videos and the guy can walk in front of me. I don't know. Um, it's been a great day to talk functional rehab of the shoulder. It's all about keeping a good, strong, tall posture because that's the foundation for shoulder motion. So that's what we looked at today. Scapular dyskinesis. Uh, stay tuned. We've got orthopedic assessment of the shoulder also in our loop. Have a great day.